What role does higher education play in deepening our Catholic faith? And how does the academic search for truth go along with our God-given mission to spread the gospel? We'll try to answer those questions tonight, so please stay with us. Thank you and welcome. I'm Father Mitch Packwell, and welcome to EWTN Live, our chance to bring you guests from all over the world. Our guest tonight is helping to bring a Christ-centered Catholic education to the learner through an online curriculum in theology and faith formation. Please welcome the president of Catholic Distance University, Marianne Evans Mount. Marianne, welcome. Thank you, Father Mitch. I'm very happy to be here. Good to have you. Thank you. Good to Thank have you. you. Welcome. Thank you. Where are you located exactly? We're located about an hour northwest of Washington, D.C. in Northern Virginia, okay. in the Diocese of Arlington. Okay. Now, I ask that just because I'm interested. It really doesn't matter where your headquarters are for people to be able to take these courses, does it? Not at all. In fact, we have a global community. Uh, we've had students in over 60 countries, and um, we welcome anyone who finds us through the web uh, with a click of a mouse or through your smartphone or iPhone or iPad. So we are definitely a global community, and that's the beauty of the Internet. And you're able to be this international university without a single dormitory. Yes, we don't have to worry about dorms or dining halls or parking passes. It's wonderful. Yeah. Now, what is the main, the, ba the basic idea, the basic program that you're offering through Catholic Distance University? Catholic Distance University began in 1983. We're going to be celebrating our 30th anniversary in 2013. And we were founded to provide catechetical training uh, to the laity, particularly after Vatican II. There was a lot of confusion. And over the years, CDU became a university. Uh, we started an MA program in theology in the late 90s. We offer a bachelor's degree in theology. It's a degree completion program so that you can take credits that you've earned at other institutions and bring them to CDU and we will give you a major in theology. Mm -hmm. And we just recently launched a very exciting new associate's degree program online uh, in the liberal arts with a concentration in Catholic studies. So we are not only a degree granting university, but we are also um, providing certificates and we're doing catechetical training and catechetical certification as well. I, I think that's uh, something important to highlight for our viewers, that they do not have to go for a bachelor's degree or a master's degree and do all the requirements associated with that and, and get a whole degree in order to take courses uh, in, in your program. And that's very true, Father Mitch. Most of our students um, are just doing continuing education. They really want to know more about their faith. Mm -hmm. Frequently, um, they will start out by taking a course in the catechism, mm -hmm. or they'll find uh, an online seminar that we're offering. Mm -hmm. We offer about 15 online interactive seminars every year. They're only three weeks in length. We have very um, well-known people who teach uh, those seminars. Mm -hmm. They might be in bioethics, they might be in sacred scripture. We just finished one on um, spirituality. Um, we're gonna be doing one on the Crusades. Um, we just, we're doing one right now on Eucharistic devotions. Um, so many, many people will come to CDU because they want uh, just really to begin to grow in their faith. And one of the great things about CDU is that our university faculty 
are providing these continuing education courses mm -hmm. and seminars. See, it's, uh, it's, it's something that I think is very important. I'd like to highlight that to our audience because uh, so many people have had a um, problem, you know, the, in their training over the last 40 years in catechism and religious ed programs where they didn't learn a lot about the faith. Uh, that it, a lot of times there wasn't as much content and people have important questions that they want answered about what's going on in the, uh, the faith. They want to understand and you're offering them an ability to do that. Yes, um, I, I think it's important today um, with digital communication, we need to be present uh, through the web. We need mm -hmm. to make it very, very simple mm -hmm. for people. Many of our students find us with a Google search. Mm -hmm. um, they have a crisis in their life or they reach a point where they realize that um, they need to know more mm -hmm. um, about who, who God is and, and who, who, what is the church and, and um, you know, what, what is, what am I working toward, you know, after, what is the meaning of life? Who mm -hmm. am I? What does mm -hmm. it mean to be a believer? Um, so we are very, very pleased that we can do this, that we can bring a Catholic university education, a very high quality education, as well as uh, continuing education to anyone. You know, you can sit at home, take off your shoes, relax, have a cup of tea, um, and open your laptop computer, and you have wonderful programs waiting for you. Mm -hmm. See, w another component of this is that a lot of people develop skills in business and their work, but they don't always keep the same pace with their religious training as they do with their professional training. And this is sort of a way to, to do that. It, that's a very important point, Father Mitch, because uh, Americans who are Catholic are really well educated today. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of us have had the advantages of higher education in our careers. As a matter of fact, since the 1960s, the Catholic community, even though it's not that old in the United States, in the 1960s, the Catholic community became the second best educated religious community. The Jewish community is first mm -hmm. and we're second. So that's a very important uh, element of our identity as Catholics, to be well educated. And that's a wonderful accomplishment. I think the problem today is that we have not kept pace with our faith, mm -hmm. with the knowledge that we have um, of our, our beliefs. And what happens is we tend to marginalize our faith to Sunday morning going to Mass. And we know from the statistics that there are 64 million Catholics in the United States, but only 24% are really going to Mass on a regular basis. Right, right. So it really is of great concern to the church. Mm -hmm. um, and it certainly should be of concern to us. Right. So this is a wonderful way um, to do something on your own without having to leave home and to go to classes and um, you meet other people. We have a very, very active... What do you mean you meet them? Do, do, do students get together? They do online. Okay. They do. And uh, it, it's a very active, very vibrant learning community. We have an online campus that includes what we call a student life center. So when our students enroll, they have a cafe where they can meet each other and uh, they upload photos of their families. They share experiences of travel. Uh, they really get to know each other. And then they also have an online chapel. So they are a praying community as well. They're mm -hmm. able to post prayer intentions for one another. They share struggles that they're going through in their families. And then we bring, uh, those prayer intentions to our daily mass at our chapel every mm -hmm. day. So okay. we really are a global praying community as well. And mm -hmm. it, the, the students forge very strong uh, relationships. Uh -huh. one, one of the other things uh, about Catholic Distance University is that you have uh, a particular kind of relationship with EWTN. 
Tell us a little bit about that. We do. We're very, very uh, proud of our relationship. EWTN uh, has been very supportive of CDU. Um, I know that frequently we uh, discover that there are 30 second spots running about CDU on EWTN because the phone rings, the emails come in. Um, we've also partnered with education. Uh, we have taken some of the uh, very well-known series that you have run uh, on Catholic cable television and we have put together course materials so that um, our students can watch the, the uh, Catholic television mm -hmm. and then be working on their course and be getting uh, recognition for, mm -hmm. for taking a course, let's say, on the catechism. We did one on church history. We did one on Cardinal Newman. Um, so it, it was great because some people like to have the, the, the visual, you know, they like mm -hmm. to watch uh, something on, on television. It gives them more of a classroom experience. They do, and um, they're able to either um, download it um, or they can buy DVDs or whatever. So, so that was, um, I thought, a very, very worthwhile uh, partnership that we had mm -hmm. with EWTN. Yeah. So, and we've had a lot of students through EWTN. Oh, that's great. You know, because you do wonderful work with education as well. Mm -hmm. And I think um, because of the great content that you give, um, students then have a hunger to really dig into it and have a more systematic understanding. And of course, to do that, they really have to be willing to be, become students. Well, one of the things about uh, taking a course with Catholic Distance University is that a student doesn't just receive information, but there's also feedback from the student that the student has to uh, do tests or papers and things, right? Yes, yes. I mean, it's very much like going to any uh, class, whether it's a, a degree program or it's continuing education. Um, there's that relationship, and that's really what education is all about. Our faculty, uh, because it's online, are really only a click away. Mm -hmm. um, so our students frequently will say that they felt a lot more personal attention at CDU because um, of the way we, we teach. But that's very important to have that relationship. And for the, the student, I know, you know nobody likes, especially if you're a working adult, the thought of going back to school. But um, learning your faith is really different from learning a body of knowledge, let's say chemistry or economics or, or English or history. Uh, because you're, you are really encountering truth, and, mm -hmm. and truth is a person. So it, it is life-changing. Yeah. You know, um, how do the students do with their grades? You know, they see that one of the things that I've noticed about a number of adult students is that they get nervous about grades because I mean, they're, they're already at a stage in their life where they're uh, accepted as being competent, they're su oftentimes very successful, and now they get put into a classroom yes. where they're being graded by somebody else to see whether or not they can make the, the grade. Do um, you find difficulties with that? It's a challenge because um, I think the greatest anxiety comes with adult learners. Mm -hmm. Exactly what you've said, they've been successful in their professions, and as an adult, the, the last thing they want is to be embarrassed right. in the classroom. Right. Um, and our faculty are aware of that. And I know that our faculty um, work uh, not only with the class, but with individuals to help prepare them for final exams. Mm -hmm. um, and it, they get over it. Um, but, and, and tr truthfully, they're all going through the same thing. And so they're very supportive of each other. We have a mentoring program. Uh, students who begin our, our master's program can have a mentor uh, from those who have graduated. Mm -hmm. So that, that can be helpful. And our faculty are really geared to be watching for anyone who is, seems to be struggling or who isn't responding mm -hmm. uh, in a normal, timely way. Uh, we don't want them to fall behind. Um, yeah, that's, that's an uh, important uh, element so that uh, some people might feel nervous mm -hmm. about getting started, yes. whereas really you're oriented toward uh, adult learners. Yes, in fact, I remember um, a pastor some years ago 
who had enrolled um, adults from his parish and when he said one lady said oh my goodness I got a 65 and he said there you go you you know 65 percent more than you did before you took this <laughs> course yeah. so um, it, yeah it is natural um, but I think the students get they get accustomed to each other they're very supportive of each other um, they pray for each other and we really celebrate when our graduate students pass their comps um, when our catechetical diploma students finish their projects. So, um, you know, it's, it's part of the, the, the humility, I guess, of recognizing that, you know, you need to, to take this journey and deepen your faith. And one, one other question on this uh, issue of the academic part is that it is accredited you know, as a university. Absolutely, yes, and it's very important when you're doing online education to go to an accredited university, mm -hmm. accredited institution. Uh, we are accredited, uh, re-accredited every five years. We've been accredited since 1986. Um, our students are able to take advantage of tax benefits because we are recognized by the U.S. Department of Education. Um, we are also certified by the state Council of Higher Education for Virginia to award degrees. Um, our catechetical programs are also recognized by the Congregation for the Clergy. And we are also very military friendly. Um, we participate in a program with the Department of Defense because we are an accredited uh, institution. We give uh, tuition reimbursement to, or the, the Department of Defense gives tuition reimbursement to military who are active duty. Mm -hmm. We participate in veterans um, benefits. So those who have GI Bill benefits can use them at CDU. Mm -hmm. So, so it, 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 it's solid as far as that goes. Um, one of the other questions, and this, this is a, a concern that many people bring up uh, about the university situation in the, the country. Um, in general, the university scene around the country is not exactly faith friendly. You know, that's oftentimes the case. What kind of relationship do your teachers and course content take toward uh, fidelity to the magisterium of the Catholic Church? What, how do you approach that? Uh, that, that is really, uh, I think, a, a core value of CDU. Um, we are an ex corda ecclesia university, which means we subscribe to the document of John Paul II about Catholic universities. Yeah, that um, was called ex corda ecclesia. ecclesia. Yes, yeah. yes, and uh, that really is the guiding document for CDU. Uh, we are one of six Catholic universities that has a bishop as the chairman of the board, mm -hmm. um, and uh, that is extremely important for us. All of our faculty are Catholic and they're um, very uh, committed to handing on the authentic teachings of the mm -hmm. church. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's very, very important. Uh, in fact, we are um, really l working with other institutions who are trying to strengthen their Catholic identity. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we have over 300 courses and in, in seminars in, in theology, so we could easily um, provide additional courses in theology mm -hmm. uh, to institutions that are trying to, to strengthen their Catholic identity. Some, some Catholic institutions have had to eliminate their theology programs. Um, so we feel that CDU could be of great help to other institutions. You know, one of the other aspects of that, so that you've got fidelity to the magisterium, and I understand that in a lot of the courses, uh, various texts are even annotated to the catechism of the Catholic Church and all, so that yes. you, you keep that link with the official teaching of the church uh, in, in the coursework. But then, is it something that is just a, a sort of a catechism class for adults, or is there going to be you know, a college level reflection and thinking about the issues, going more deeply into the issues of the faith? Well, we do have a catechetical level for our continuing education, okay. but we offer very serious uh, education at the, at the degree level, particularly mm -hmm. our graduate program, which is really our flagship program. And that's a very challenging um, academic 
uh, program. They have to do two sets of comps. They write a thesis. Uh, in addition to doing 39 credits mm -hmm. uh, of coursework. Mm -hmm. um, and many of our students have advanced degrees. I mean, we have a lot of medical doctors who will tell us, you know, I have a wall full of degrees, and this has been equally as challenging, but far, far more life-changing than mm -hmm. any, any other right. uh, academic program that I've, I've uh, been mm -hmm. part of. So it's, it, is, it is serious education if you're at the graduate level or even at the undergraduate level you know very, we have very very good faculty um, so yeah no so it really is um, for at least three different levels yes for the the person who casually wants to know more about their faith without getting a degree yes absolutely and you don't do you have to have a high school degree to do no. those courses no you do not. You're, we welcome everyone. You don't have to be Catholic. You don't have to have a high school degree. Um, and in theory, you could really start um, and work your way all the way up through a master's degree if you had the, the credentials. So, mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But then there's also the bachelor degree level. Yes. Where you get an, you can, if you do have a high school degree, mm -hmm. then you can go on and get a bachelor's degree uh, and the main majors are what? The major at the bachelor's level is uh, theology for a okay. BA degree. We okay. are very specialized. Now we did decide to pursue the associate's degree because first of all, we found that a lot of our bachelor's students needed additional credits in general education um, and we thought it would be very good to have an associate's degree because um, we could reach out to younger people. Um, for example, a young person might want to do his first two years online with CDU and then transfer to a, to a traditional uh, bricks and mortar sure. four year camp, live on a campus and, and have a, mm -hmm. you know, a degree from a, sure. a traditional Catholic university or any, any university. So mm -hmm. um, that was uh, part of the idea of, of doing the associate's degree and then recognizing that a lot who, of people who wanted to be in the bachelor's didn't have 90 credits. So um, a number of them are very happy that we, they can now start uh, with no, no college credit and be working toward that. You know, this is um, a very important element because uh, the modern world has so many challenges uh, on, on a variety of levels. There's social challenges, intellectual challenges, and, and religious challenges. And, and it sounds as if you're try, trying to offer a way for people to be prepared to meet those challenges from the perspective of faith. Right, I mean, we need to be grounded in our faith, and I think then all these other challenges make sense to us, we're able to deal with them. But we mm -hmm. have to have a foundation in our faith. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's difficult for people to access that. So mm -hmm. by coming to CDU, they're getting very sound, solid education in their faith, and they are part of a, a very supportive learning community. Mm -hmm. And many of our students really talk about how CDU has changed their lives. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I have a... Um, discussion group, uh, it's called Coffee with the President. Anybody in the campus can um, in, go in, get into my little area and we can dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, and I, knowing that I was coming on EWTN Live, I had um, three of the graduate students telling me what CDU had meant for them. Two of them were medical doctors and they both said, this is the first time I have done, I have sought education to change myself. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then we, another uh, of our graduate students is from Hungary, and he's an IT manager, and he commutes between Belgium and Budapest. So That's a every long week, commute. every week. So he said, the only option I had was CDU. Mm -hmm. Does he speak English? Yes, you have. To, you have to speak English. We. We're not yet uh, translating into other languages, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. um, yeah, he does very well. Oh, that's good. Very well. That's good. But, uh, but you're absolutely right. Um, faith has to be the foundation of, of everything. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, one of the things about 
learning uh, about the faith is that this really helps to give the individual a sense of the meaning of life. You know, what's, yes. why am I here? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's why a course like this, even later in life, is very important because as, as you get older, you start thinking about uh, evaluating the f earlier mm -hmm. decades of your life. Yes. And you start thinking about the, the last decades coming up soon. Uh, you know, you, you reflect on the meaning of death. And even for uh, an older student, this would be very important to, to help grasp a sense of both ends of life that you're looking at. Absolutely. In fact, we do have a lot of grandparents who decide to take a course for that very reason that they're moving into a time of life where they are thinking about mm -hmm. death. Mm -hmm. and thinking about eternity. Um, and they're also thinking about their grandchildren and mm -hmm. they want to be able to hand on to their grandchildren the faith uh, in a very coherent way. Well, that's, that's another aspect I, I like to use as an example of, of that. Um, you know, being in graduate school, uh, had to learn a lot of different languages uh, some of which you learn better than others. And one of the languages I had to have was French for reading articles in the, mm -hmm. in the periodicals and journals. But one of the things about my French is that I can't speak it. I can read it and understand an article, but I can't put into words, mm -hmm. you know, what I want to say. Uh, very few words I can do. That strikes me as the way a lot of Catholics experience their faith. They recognize Catholicism when they see it, mm -hmm. but they don't know how to put it into words. I think that's true. And, and I think we have a hard time sometimes uh, ex coming back to people who challenge us in ways that are persuasive. We know it is the truth, but we don't know how to present it in a way that is convincing. Um, and, and we need to be able to do that. Uh, on Monday, we had the great honor of uh, welcoming Archbishop Fisichella, who is the president of the new Pontifical Council for promoting the new evangelization. And he said something very interesting. Um, he said that when bishops have come to visit him, they'll ask him, Archbishop, what should I be doing? What programs should I be um, putting into my diocese for the new evangelization. And he said, I tell them, do nothing, reflect. We need to reflect on the meaning of what it is to be a believer, what it is to be a Catholic, mm -hmm. what it is to have the church as our mother. And so I think education is very critical to that reflection. Um, we need to have a uh, a systematic understanding, you know, a, a, an overall framework for our faith. And for us um, as Americans, we're busy with our professions. We really haven't had that opportunity. So we need to go back and, and make the commitment to do that. Yeah. yeah. All right. We well, you know we have to take a break. We're going to come back in just a couple of minutes. And we would like to get some of your comments and your questions for Marianne. So please stay with us.
Thank you and welcome back. Uh, we have a nice group of folks here from the Chicago area who are here on pilgrimage. They've come as a group. If you would like to come to be part of our audience and make a pilgrimage down here, we would love to have you. You can contact our pilgrimage department at 205-271-2966. It's 205-271-2966. Or go to our website, www.ewtn.com. And they will help you with uh, letting you know what places you can stay, uh, scheduling for masses and programs, tours of the studio, directions to get to Hansville to visit the Shrine of the Most Blessed Sacrament and the sisters up there. And we love having to come. It makes it a lot more fun. So uh, please consider it, whether you come as an individual or as a group from your parish or, or a prayer group. Uh, we'd love to, to have it down here. So come on down. You ready for some questions? Yes, Father. All right, let's start off with the caller. Questions. We have Tony on the line. Hello, Tony. Hi, Father. Hi, where are you from? I'm from Berkeley Township outside of Toms River, New Jersey. Great. And what is your question? Well, basically, uh, we're wondering, my wife and I, uh, the percentage, uh, if you know, of uh, non-Catholics taking the course that eventually may come into the church as a result of it. Oh, good question. Do you have a rough idea about what percentage of your students are not Catholic? Um, I would say about 5%. 5%. Yes. We really would like to reach out to anyone who goes through an RCA program and comes mm. into the church because oh, that's that a good is idea. such, that is really just the beginning of the long journey. So um, we really think it would be great for RCIA graduates to come. Oh, that but, would be But we welcome, true. we welcome everyone. In fact, we just last year had an MA graduate who was an Anglican priest from Australia. Uh-huh. And uh, is now studying for the, the Catholic priesthood. Oh, is he? Yes. Well, there you go. Well, so, that, that gets at Tony's question right there. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, I, I think um, that having this available for people who are in RCIA, mm -hmm is very good because, as you say, they're just beginning their questions yes. in the one year of preparation. They really need a lot more afterwards. Yeah, that's a yes. good idea. We have a question from our studio audience. Sir, where are you from? Uh, Arlington Heights. Arlington Heights, Illinois. Right. Yes. Great. And what's your question? Um, is there, uh, do you offer uh, credit for uh, pilgrimages? Or well, I know when I went on pilgrimage father, Mitch, you know, walking through the pages of the Bible were a tremendous amount and more than I could by opening up the Bible and read it. So do you offer anything like that or do you know anybody who does? Uh, we have been doing pilgrimages over the years. And uh, when we first uh, did a pilgrimage to the Holy Land in 1993, we did open it up to students and we gave them the option of earning a credit for it. Um, but I have to say, we've had wonderful people on our pilgrimages, but almost never attracted students. And it seems as though they're either spending all their money for tuition or they're too busy studying. Um, but it, I mean, it's a, it's a great idea. Um, and I have to say right now, we don't have any pilgrimages going, mm -hmm. um, but uh, we've certainly been open to the idea. Mm -hmm. That brings up a, an important point that we didn't discuss before. What is the tuition? What does it cost? Well, first of all, tuition at, at Catholic Distance University is probably half what you would pay at a traditional university. Mm -hmm. um, Plus no dorm fees. No dorm fees, no commuting, no babysitting. Um, that's right. Um, our graduate tuition is $450 per credit. So you multiply that times three for a three credit course. And undergraduate is $290 a credit. Mm -hmm. And then our continuing education courses, which are non-credit, are $165. Mm -hmm. um, however, as I mentioned, we're partnering now with, with dioceses so that if they uh, pay a subsidy, then the members of the diocese are only paying $30. Okay. So, so, so for an MA at, with about 39 credits, it would be about $1,500. 
17500 yes. for the yes, whole course. that is correct, for now, the whole degree. Now, uh, that is less than half of one year's of undergrad at my mm -hmm. alma mater, yes. you know, Vanderbilt. You know, it's, uh, so I, a lot of universities are charging between thirty and $40,000 a year. This is the whole master's program for seventeen five. Yes, yeah. very top-notch faculty. Good. It's an excellent program. Good. Yeah, and, and I'm, I think that a lot of people should think about the AA for their children because they, a -A? the associate's degree. Okay. Because they can save a lot of money for the first two years. Mm -hmm. um, sure. All right. Now let's, uh, we have a call on the line. Uh, George. Hello, George. Hey, Father Mitch. How are you? Fine. Where are you from? Upstate New York. Great. And what's your question? Well, I just want to say I'm a student at CDU. I'm in the catechetical diploma course. And I just want to tell everybody, if you ever wanted to learn your faith, go to CDU, because CDU teaches the why of Catholicism. I'm a commissioned ca uh, catechist in my diocese. And thanks to CDU, uh, I've turned at least three kids around at ninth grade level who told their parents, as soon as I get confirmed, I'm done, I'm out of here. They came up to me after class and said, finally, I know why we believe what we believe in. So anybody who wants to learn the truth about the faith, the why of Catholicism, you could do it online, just get online and get in there and just enjoy it because the great professors and they'll do anything for you. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Thank you, George. Appreciate that uh, input from one of the students. Good to um, hear from Do you have any comments on that? George, it's great to hear from you. And I, I understand you're a retired policeman. Is that right? Uh, I think yes, that's correct. And uh, people normally come to our church and say for ninth grade, I want my kid to go to that cop. <laughs> uh, good. It's wonderful. Good, George. Keep that up. Keep that up. See, that's... That's one of the things that, uh, again, we're trying to emphasize. Um, theology is faith-seeking understanding. Mm -hmm. You know, you have faith before you start theology, but you want to understand it. The mind craves understanding. And that's a great thing about getting a, a good education, as much education as you are capable of getting. You know, um, I, I recently was reading a book about how, you know, one of the characteristics of great sports heroes is that they don't settle for mediocrity in their own lives. Mm -hmm. They really go for excellence. And that should be a motto for all of us, to be excellent at knowing my faith. Absolutely, what is more important? Yeah. I mean, if, we're, if we are hoping to spend eternity with God, we need to know who God is. And, right. Uh, right. Absolutely. It's right. a lifelong journey. Yes, And it, it is. brings great joy. Yep, I'd agree. We have another question from our studio uh, audience. Sir, where are you from? Well, where you are you from, first of all? Okay, I am from Chicago, Illinois. Chicago, great. And what's your question? My question is, uh, there are two sides of education. Uh, we know it, it's theory, but action is better than words. Now our students, they want you not to preach them, but to show them at, at the same time. Both of those should go, go hand in hand. How do you enrich your curriculum? Do you have like role playing or uh, role playing, something mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Or check their, how they are living their path, how, what they have learned? So in other words, how do you get the aspect of faith by which people take action? They're not just thinking about the faith, but they're acting out. Do you give them some things to do to help them, you know, make the faith come more alive? 
Uh, sometimes they're, they're given opportunities for, for papers, for example, mm -hmm. where they're able to research the kind of um, volunteer work that they're doing or paid work for the church if they're music ministers or um, working in catechetics. Um, they're, they're able to do projects uh, that help um, explore that and link it to the church's teachings. But they also share their lives with one another in our online campus. Mm -hmm. And so they're constantly interacting and they are really witnessing to one another um, about how they live their faith. And the faculty too are witnessing to their faith by the way they work with the students, our mm -hmm. staff as well. Um, you know, they, the students need to have a sense of the Catholic Church from the moment they, they click on our website to the time they, they call us, to the time that they enroll, the kind of support they get. Mm -hmm. um, those are all ways that the love of the church is communicated to them. Sure. And they in turn are taking that to their own communities. You know, years ago there was concern that people who were studying online were isolated, you know, and they weren't part of their community, the, the parish. And, but that is certainly the opposite because, in fact, our students are very active in their parishes. The education that they get is so inspiring to them that it, they just have an urgency to go out and to, to serve and to share. That's good news that they've discovered. Right. We have another caller on the line. Hello, Nancy. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Where um, are you from? I'm, I'm actually from the Seattle area, but I'm calling from Oklahoma. Okay. And what's your question? Um, uh, my question is, growing up in the, par growing up in the Catholic Church, um, one of the things that I experienced was very little education offered to the parish at large. And how are the people who are going through, the, going through this program, how are they actually participating in the parish life? Um, offering good, solid Catholic education to basically the parish, not, not focusing on the high schools, not focusing on other entities that really don't, I mean, in my personal experience, really haven't served the parish well. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had students who, because of the credentials that they've earned at CDU, whether it's a certificate or a degree, um, have been invited by their pastors to lead adult education programs. For example, we have, I think it's seven or eight parishes in New Hampshire who have come together to participate in our subsidy program um, so that um, each parish is donating a, a portion of that subsidy so that everybody in all those parishes can take our courses. Okay. And these courses are wonderful adult education. So one of the things that, uh, uh, there the are a couple ways in which this goes on. Sometimes your students offer adult education courses mm -hmm. in parishes. Yes. And the more students you get graduated, the more it will be available to offer those kind of courses. But then also, as you say, in New Hampshire, uh, a bunch of parishes make it possible for the adults in the parish to take CDU courses yes. Yes. by subsidizing it. Mm -hmm. You also have a program with some dioceses doing that, correct? We do, we call it the diocesan subsidy program, but we've adapted that model. So for example, for these parishes in New Hampshire, and I think at the time they inquired, um, they were getting a new bishop, but they didn't have a bishop. So they, mm -hmm. they really wanted to be able to, to do this. And we're also doing it with these sisters in Nigeria. So we're very open to working with groups um, but yes, we want more and more dioceses to think of partnering with CDU because I think online education is, is such a convenient and flexible way mm -hmm. to study your faith. Yeah. One question I have, I mean, um, my experience is in teaching uh, high school and university in a traditional setting, you know, bricks and mortar place. And every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, we have class at 8 a.m. And it's time to get going. And here's when your papers are due and all that. With this kind of program, um, can a student, you know, slow, be slower? You know, the, is, the course, is the classwork 
something that the student can do on his or her own time? Or is there a set time everybody has to be in class together? No. That's what we call synchronous, where everybody has to meet at the same time. And we don't really have any uh, programs that are like that. Now we do have different formats. For mm -hmm. example, at the continuing education level, if you want to study the catechism, that we call that on-demand courses. You can log on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days of the year and start one of those courses and work through it mm -hmm. with automated testing and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, our college level courses are semester based. We have three semesters a year and within that time frame every week you're given the professor's lecture, the assignments, the readings. So you have to log on at least once each week and you have to participate in discussion. And we call that asynchronous learning which is actually very, very beneficial because you can log on, do the reading, see the assignments, and then think and reflect before mm -hmm. you have to actually contribute. Mm -hmm. um, and that's very, very beneficial. Oh, that's good. All right. That's good to know because somebody might say, well, I'll sign up for an online course mm -hmm. and take maybe two years to take it, but that won't work. It doesn't work, and we give deadlines Number one, because we know adults need deadlines. Yes. And, and secondly, um, we don't want people just being stuck in one course forever. Right. Um, so we allow, I believe, six months for our continuing education courses that are on demand where you're pretty much working independently. Mm -hmm. And all our other courses, for example, our seminars are three weeks. You have to log on at least once a week for each of the three weeks. And then our regular semester courses for our degree programs, it's once a week. And it's 12 weeks semester with an additional two weeks to finish your paper and prepare for your final exam. Okay. And final exams are proctored in your community. Oh, so so you can't cheat. No cheating. No, <laughs> no, no. We we have that covered. All right. So, can you have your mom be the proctor? No. 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 Okay. <laughs> just check in. Just check in. We have another caller online. Hello, Mary. Hello, Father. Hi. Where are you from? Florida. Great. And what's your question? Um, my question is uh, for both of you. Um, we have a daughter that graduated from pre med, and she since then was married and has a, a baby, and she's in med school now, and she has a, a testing anxiety. She knows all the information, but when she goes in to the classroom, she draws a blank. And do you have any ideas of how she could get around it? I think she's worried about leaving the baby. That's my opinion, mm -hmm. but um, if you have any ideas how she can get around that. You have, have you had that experience with students? Um, we have, yes. We have had students who've had that particular issue, and we do try to work with them um, and it, on a case-by-case -case basis. And I would encourage her daughter, perhaps, to talk to someone at the university mm -hmm. um, to see if, you know, perhaps taking it by herself rather than in a class might be less... Um, create less anxiety or maybe have it untimed. I know that's something that we do provide for our students if mm -hmm. they need untimed testing. Yeah, it, it's, it, you know, it, it's very important. I mean, the, the, Mary has a hunch that her daughter is uh, concerned about leaving the baby mm -hmm. behind, you know, um, and, and maybe neglecting the baby. But one of the things that I would think very important is for her daughter to sit back and reflect a bit about what do you think is going to happen to you? You know, uh, to try to analyze, you know, what is the source of mm -hmm. the anxiety and what might happen to you if you come in there and answer all the questions or don't answer the questions. What, what are you thinking? And, you know, I've had even a few students who get that kind of anxiety because they are afraid of success. Hmm. If they succeed at the test, 
then they're afraid that more will be expected of them. So they do a little bit of self-sabotage mm -hmm. in order not to, in it to have the expectations of them raised up. Now, that's not everybody, but that does happen to some students. And so what, whatever the source of the anxiety is, it'll be very important to find out its, its, its roots because if she doesn't know why she feels the anxiety, she won't know what kind of action to take. Uh, you know, then again, uh, having a baby, she might try reading the little red train that could, you know, just saying, I think I can, mm -hmm, I think I can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes just repeating that uh, can help you get through it. Uh, it's kind of tricking yourself a bit, you know, so that's, a little bit of, you know, old time teacher advice that I might give. Now, sometimes uh, students will come to us because they do find classes and um, very intimidating, but studying on their own, much less intimidating. Yes. yes. And if you're an introvert in an online class, it's much easier to participate in the discussion because you can edit what you write before you put it up there. Right. So exactly. Exactly, and that's that's something that can be very useful, yes. especially for adult students. Yes, yes. You know that um, uh, when I taught undergrads, I, I did not find them quite so anxious about failure. Mm -hmm. You know, they they just sort of plowed ahead and did the best they could, and you know, took it as the, as the cards fell. But when I taught adult, an adult program at University of Dallas, then um, I found great anxiety. I had to stop giving exams mm -hmm. and just assign papers because mm -hmm. um, they were afraid uh, uh, to take exams. And so that's one of the things. Go ahead. Well, our students still have to take exams. I'm sure if they had the option, they'd rather not. Right. Um, but our, our faculty do, they, they're very good about answering questions and well, working good. with students individually if they're mm -hmm. in a bit of a panic mode. Uh, and I know um, the conversation in the cafe before exam time is frequently students reaching out to other students asking them, well, did you find that exam with Professor so-and-so really difficult? And you know, it's, it's very, very normal for, for anybody who's studying. Sure, sure. You know, uh, one of the comments that you did make, I'd like you to explain maybe a little bit more if you can. Uh, you said something about uh, Catholic Distance University being military friendly. Um, what did you mean by that in terms of the financial aid and all? Uh, we're very open to the military because we know that they have um, very challenging lifestyle. You know, the, the husbands and the wives are, are deployed and um, what we're offering is so vital for um, the support of their lives. Um, and we, as I mentioned, we work with the Department of Defense for active duty military personnel. Um, if they're in a degree program, they can get tuition reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And um, then we also work with the Veterans Administration. They have education benefits from serving in the military, and they can use them at CDU. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also um, are a yellow ribbon school. What does that mean? Yellow ribbon means that um, the military, uh, or I guess it's the Veterans uh, Administration, for every state they come up with a median tuition that they're willing to pay um, based on the, I guess it's the average of this, the in-state tuition. So if a private college or university um, is higher than that median amount, um, the institution agrees to um, lower their tuition to meet the median amount mm -hmm. so that the um, veteran can go to a private college of his or her choice. Okay. And we do that. Okay. We right. do that. So, we have quite a few military. I'd say about 20%. Yeah, it'd be the kind of thing that they can do, you know, even if they get deployed during the sem semester. Oh, yes. They can, they can still continue on with the course. Absolutely. Right. I just want to give some of the information. Um, uh, Catholic Distance University is the name. Uh, the phone number is 540-338-2700. Five four zero three three eight two seven hundred, or 
1-888-254-4 CDU. You know, I also have a, a website, uh, cdu.edu slash EWTN. And you've got that available. We have, we, we have run right out of time. So thank you very much for being with us. And let me give you all a blessing. May the Lord bless you and fill you with his wisdom, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And, you know, we can partner with Catholic Distance University and bring you this program and all the other programs we bring you because this network is brought to you by you. Uh, so please keep us in between your gas bill, your electric bill, and your cable bill because we have a lot of bills to pay too and we need your help. Thank you and God bless.